Okay. Hello. Welcome, 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 welcome. I gotta finish this. The um, I probably should have finished it last night, just off camera, but there's only a little bit of go going left, a little bit to go left. I got this area back here, the skyline. But let's go ahead and um, put in the speech bubbles and figure out what did I. There's some things that ended up on the speech bubbles layer. Like these moons for some reason. So let's go ahead and try and convert them over to their own layer <laughs> and put it over somewhere over there. All right, back to the speech bubbles. I figure if I get these out of the way. Um, it'll be clearer what I have to do. It's also the reason I kind of left them undone so I could get all that area behind it. But now I'm realizing that it might not be as important as I thought it was. I was looking at this this morning and I also thought, um, I want to put some texture or shading on the trees on the far side so that the light seems to be coming from the ship. This probably looks very messy to you right now. The awkward teenager stage. I was listening to some art blogger and they were talking about paintings and they said, oh, all paintings have an awkward teenager stage. Now this what is directly in line with the diagonal that I want to use, so it's in the wrong place. Um, placement of your speech bubbles is important. So we're going to put that off to the side a bit. And then we're going to put our tails. Whoops. Right there. And now we're going to hope for the best. Yes, it worked. Okay. So there we go. And then these two speeches, these two lines, what? I got this fire. Stop. I'm going a little bit bolder because she's louder here. And then that's the tail coming from around the same area. And we did it wrong. So where's the hole? <laughs> Let's try it again. Yeah, there's definitely a hole there. I think it might be right there. All right, let's give it one more shot. Uh, I guess correctly, okay. All right, now we have... That looks like almost like a sane comics panel, right? We got to do the um, um, forest up on the top here. Where is it? Rusty Nib. There we go. Our trusty Rusty. This is meant to be like a cliff or something.
I can tell you that the first time I really got into drawing the backgrounds was on um, Unga Bunga. There's these forests. Usually when you're doing comics, it's like, you know, your mind is really focused on the characters. You're like, I'm drawing these characters. And, you know, what's the background? It's like, I don't know, I'll just put like a line behind him and that'll be the horizon line. <laughs> They're in a room somewhere. Let's do a uh, cloud right here. I don't like to go on the exact lines of the cloud that I had. That keeps it a little bit fresh. I don't know if it's true or not. Got some lost horizon lines here. This is an alien planet. All right. If you'd like to read the whole comic right now, it's um, pages are posted as soon as they're done. Every three or four days over on my Instagram, which is rabbitfighter13. And this will go to print. As soon as this one is done, this will be combined with Book of Ruin. And it'll go to print. It's too thick of a line right here. I don't know if you remember me talking last time. Anything we're doing in the in the deep background, we've got to really pay attention to the um, line weight of our lines, and they have to be thin, thin line weight. Because if you start close up, you know, thick line weight, and then as you get further and further back, it's thinner and thinner. When I was taking um, inking. With Joe Prado, I used to get really dinged on that because I didn't do it right. But I learned, you know, he was a good teacher. I, I, I highly recommend if you get a chance to take a class from Joe Prado to take it. Jump at the opportunity. He's a good teacher. Taught all kinds of things. All right. I got another cloud over there. This is meant to be just like a pool. Sky texture. Is that it? Let's take the pencil lines out completely. That's looking pretty good, actually. Oops. Come back here. Take the pencil lines back out. Okay. Here's what I need to do. I foolishly... I foolishly put all of that into the bubbles layer. And now it's too close to get rid of. All right, so we're going to go back to the tones layer. I want to do some um, shading on the trees as if the ship is the brightest thing and that everything is kind of focused on the ship. So the way I'm going to do that. So I'm going to just shade the side of the trees with this scallop kind of texture, this lumpy, lumpy bump texture. On the side that faces away from the ship. So on this side, it'll be the other side that gets the texture. Like on that side. And then some of these that it would be completely in shade. We could do that. For the ones that are in front, we could actually do the entire thing, but I think we're just going to do... a bit like that. So last night, like, I had been demoing um, some of the like the, those websites that you can take classes on, like Skillshare and Domestica. I'm on Domestica right now, taking the Matthias Adelson sketchbooking course. And really like him. Mm. 
but when I was demoing them on um, on our Discord for some other people, I went over and showed them my old Skillshare account, which I haven't had for a couple of years. But you can still log into it, even if you're you know you no longer have a current membership. You can still log into your old account and just see all your old stuff and your old projects and everything. But here's what I didn't know: once you do that, they start sending you emails to please come back. <laughs> And some of those emails were kind of compelling because it's like $165 for a membership, which is really too much. I don't like that. That's, this is wrong. Um, but those emails start to go down. And so basically they gave me a 65% off deal where it was $60 for the whole, or $65 for the whole year. And I'm like, that's affordable. I could do that. I like Skillshare. Um, when I was just starting to do stuff, uh, it's kind of embarrassing because you go back on it and I'm looking at this and I don't know if I like it because I want it to have I want it to be on the far side but this one is in front of it so it's okay to be It's okay to be just all in front here. Let's do it that way. It's embarrassing because you can see how bad you were. You know, you, you can really see your progress after a while. And, um, you know, I learned a lot or got started learning a lot. I took classes from uh, Gabrielle Bricky and the Art Mother and Ira Marks. And Yasmina creates. And some of those are really good. If you've never done Skillshare or Domestica, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. Um, it's pretty good. I mean, I like doing classes. I think that's a lot of fun. Okay, so this is... So what texture is, when we're doing these textures like this, texture is, is the shading. You know, just like in... If we were coloring this with crayons, we might get a darker crayon and, you know... But instead with, we're not really inking, we're kind of simulating ink here. You would create a texture and just stick to it, whatever it is. And the texture could be, it could be, you know, like that or this, you know. In my case, it's these kind of lumpy things right here and it's scaled to the size of the tree now this seems tedious first of all it is yes but the effect once you get everything done that's pretty good. All right. And this is print size right about here, so it'll be pretty small once you get away from these big trees. Want to avoid overlapping. That looks about right. The ones in front, I think the texture can go all over it if we wanted to, or at least have some kind of nuance. But the ones that are surrounding it, we want to show that the texture facing away from the light.
so it implies some lighting. And like your eye, you may you just make this judgment that it's oh it's brighter here because we have the shadows facing away in all directions. For the ones that aren't the shading they'll be on this side. Okay, that makes sense. Tonight I'm doing drive-in Saturday at 6 p.m. I'll be working in my sketchbook and maybe we'll brainstorm what the next chapter is. I haven't written or come up with too much for the next chapter yet. That looks pretty good. It's not looking too busy. It's just, that was my worry. Okay, so these behind it, we want to imply that they have it, but not too much of it. And always, we gotta keep the um, our line weight. Kind of in mind. I gotta send an email or contact uh, Windblock. See how he's doing on the that cover image. See if he's gotten anywhere on it. He's not late yet, technically, because. Bishop's not finished with his, but I do want to get it going, and I've got to get it co colored as well. I've got someone lined up to do color. Plus, I've got to get a back cover and some other stuff together. I definitely think it looks better with the texture than without the texture. Sometimes that's what it comes down to. Are you making an improvement here or, you know, what are we trying to do? <laughs> what are we trying to accomplish? I think this is going the wrong direction. For this one, I think we're going to go It's okay to reverse course as long as you don't give up. That's a little bit better, okay. So once she gets out of the ship, we have to put Princess Illuminara in immediate danger, like... A monster, or a robot, or something's gonna have to start menacing her. So that we understand the... 
the risks of this of this journey here, you know, of this experience. All right, let's do the big one. This is this one right here. Don't like when they cross over like that. Because I'm taking going too fast, I think. Slow down, Peter. I don't like it here because I think it should be facing the other direction. Don't worry, we'll eventually get this right. I have got some crossover. Something like that. Same here. See how wiggly my line is right here? This is this um, rusty nib brush. And having the noise in the line here, like you can't see it until you zoom in. Like when I zoom back out, this is print size. Um, you, I mean, you can kind of see it, but the, the noise makes it um, feel more natural to me. Because I could use, see this line, this is the line I use for the um, speech bubbles. It's not the same as this line. Yeah, it's looking good. Now, I think we really could have chosen to smooth, like, untextured trees. They were looking okay when I first started them out. But I like them even better with the texture because it kind of implies something tactile about the, the world here. And this will be printed in black and white, but it could be printed in color. Like we could probably figure out a way to do it. Usually it's prohibitively expensive to print things in color. Um, if you're not doing it at, you know, at scale, you know, a thousand print run, you end up with, you know, the $20 comic book, which I don't want to do. I want it to be as cheap as possible. Oh shoot, I got to the inky layer and then I... Is it in tones? I think it's in tones. Yeah. All right, hang on. Hang about. Hello. 
There we go. Oh, this one. Now that one stands out because it doesn't have anything. And this one stands out. Just feels more tactile. Like you could touch it. Now, what about these things in the background? And the ones in the background, I don't think were as, are as important. I think we can kind of imply some without going too deep. You know, because they're, they're so far in the distance. They aren't part of our lighting considerations, really. How about those moons? The moon should have some kind of texture. And although it's not obvious, that's supposed to be water back here. This was like a little a flowing river or something. I guess we'll show it a little bit more in depth when we start walking around back there with the characters. But I think that's a page. I think that's it. I think we've done it. We've cracked the code. All right, if you followed this long and you're wondering what the whole thing looks like, it starts here. This is page one, page two. And I, I, I need more big chunky areas of dark. Page three, where she's left on the ship. And then page four, where Eero gets taken prisoner. And then she ends up hyper warping to someplace she does not know yet. Then they set her down on Talor. Ship descends, whoops. And there it is, now she's on the new planet. Okay. And the adventure continues, that was page seven. We're gonna continue on, I'm hoping to get, I think, 17 or 19 pages out of the story. I may completely screw that up and get 11, <laughs> you know? Uh, it'll be more than 11. It'll be more than 11. But this will be combined with um, Book of Ruin, which is another story. Um, which is right here. Yeah. So there's Book of Ruin. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen pages. It's got to equal out to thirty-two, whatever we do. And we go lower than thirty-two because we've got a copyright page and we could do some other stuff. But it's, um, thirty-two minus thirteen is nineteen. So that's the ideal length, 18 or 19 pages, for Princess of Apshai. All right. Please like, follow, and subscribe, and I will talk to you later. Uh, tune in tonight, if you want, around 6 p.m. Eastern for Drive-In Saturday. We're going to do some sketchbooking. i got a sketchbook I'm almost done with. I've been doing a lot of color, <laughs> which is exciting and some mixed media stuff. And I just replenished my, my uh, Karen Dash watercolors. So I'm excited to do some watercolor stuff. We'll see what happens. All right, talk to you later. Bye.